In this video, we are going to look at self-reciprocal polynomials. So we are going to continue our course on polynomials here. And we are going to talk about these special class of polynomials, right? So basically, what are self-reciprocal polynomials? Polynomial Px is its own, is the reciprocal of itself. So that is the situation for a self-reciprocal polynomial. And as we have seen in the previous videos, we can find the reciprocal of a polynomial by taking x bar d p of 1 by x, where d was the degree of p. So for self-reciprocal polynomials, you get the condition p of x is equal to x bar d p of 1 by x, right? An example for this kind of polynomial would be x squared plus x plus 1. That is a self-reciprocal polynomial. From the definition, it should be immediately obvious that these are polynomials where there is a symmetry in the coefficients. Symmetry in the coefficients of p of x. p of x. Such that basically a d will be equal to a 0, a d minus 1 will be equal to a 1 and so on. Here d is the largest degree coefficient and a0 is the constant term. So you can see here, one is the coefficient of x squared and one is the constant term. And this kind of property has to be satisfied for a polynomial to be self-reciprocal. Now what we will do is try to characterize a reciprocal polynomial, self-reciprocal polynomial, through some techniques. We'll take two cases. Case one is basically where the polynomial has degree d, let's say p of x, as degree d where d is even d is even right so in that case let's write p of x like this p of x is a d x power d plus a d minus 1 x power d minus 1 and so on till a 1 x plus a naught right and because a d minus i will be equal to a i. Why? Because it's a reciprocal polynomial. This is true for all i going from 0, 1 till d by 2. Notice that we can take d by 2 because d was even. So this is an integer. So for all i, this result is valid. So what we can do is we can factor d by 2, x power d by 2 outside. So we can say p of x is equal to x power d by 2 common and this becomes a d x power d by 2 plus a d by x power d by 2. Why am I able to do this? What I mean to say basically if you take d by 2 power common you will have things like this. You will have a situation like this a d x power d by 2 plus a d minus 1 x power d by 2 minus 1 and so on till a 1 x power this is 1 minus d by 2 plus a 0 x power minus d by 2 and now because from this result we have a d is equal to a 0 I can take a 0 and a d common here and write it as a d x power d by 2 plus 1 by x power d by 2 Plus, notice here, first, second term and second last term, I can take a1 common or ad minus 1, which is equal to a1. ad minus 1 is equal to a1, so I can take ad minus 1 common. It will become x power d by 2 minus 1 plus 1 by x power d by 2 minus 1. And so on, you will get a lot of these common factors. Finally, the last couple of terms will be a d by 2 plus 1 and you will have x plus 1 by x and the last term will be a d by 2. So this is coming inside the bracket and outside we have x power d by 2 is p of x. What is the benefit of writing it like this? Notice that each of these brackets here as x power d by 2 plus 1 by x power d by 2, x power d by 2 minus 1 plus 1 by x power d by 2 minus 1. So it's like x power sum integer plus 1 by x power sum integer. 
Now, what we can show is that anytime you have a situation like this, x bar k plus 1 plus 1 by x bar k plus 1, it can always be written by this recurrence relation like this minus x power k minus 1 plus 1 by x power k minus 1, right? So basically what I'm saying is x power k plus 1 by x power k can be represented, can be represented as a polynomial as a polynomial in terms of the variable x plus 1 by x so basically you can write x bar k plus 1 by x bar k can be written as t of k as a function of x plus 1 by x where t k x is some polynomial right? What do I mean by this? It's pretty simple. x plus 1 by x is written as t of x plus 1 by x, where t 1 x is simply the polynomial x. Similarly, x squared plus 1 by x squared can be written as x plus 1 by x whole squared minus 2. So therefore, t 2 x is equal to x squared minus 2. You are able to write all of these powers in terms of the function of x plus 1 by x. Here t1x was x, here t2x is x square minus 2. You can always find a tkx, a function, such that this recurrence relation will be true. tk plus 1y will be equal to y times tk y minus tk minus 1y. This kind of recurrence relation will be true. So, for example, if I wanted to find x cube plus 1 by x cube, I can write it as x plus 1 by x multiplied by t2 of y, which is basically I can write it as this cube minus 3x plus 1 by x, right? Think about this. This is a cube plus b cube can be written like this. So my polynomial is x cube minus 3x. This is my t3x. Notice that t3x satisfies this recurrence. Put k is equal to 2 here. You get t3y is equal to y times t2y. t2y is y square minus 2 minus t1y, which is y. So you're getting y cube minus 3y. So what we are just saying is any power like this can be written in terms of a function of x plus 1 by x, right? The reason we are doing it is because we had a situation like this. We got p of x, we got earlier as x power d by 2. And inside I had ad x power d by 2 plus 1 by x power d by 2 and so on till a d by 2 plus 1 x plus 1 by x plus a d by 2, right? Now I can rewrite this as x power d by 2. This thing is a d t of d by 2 of x plus you get a d minus 1 t of d by 2 minus 1 of x and so on so on till a d by 2. Basically, I'm going to call this entire thing inside as a polynomial q of x plus 1 by x. Because t d by 2 of x was a function of x plus 1 by x. Right? t d by 2 of x, t of x was defined as a function of x plus 1 by x. Right? So, therefore, we are getting this characterization and we are saying that this is x bar d by 2 multiplied by q of x plus 1 by x where q of x is a polynomial with real coefficients with real coefficients so any polynomial which is self reciprocal and has even degree can be written like this 
x power d by 2 times q of x plus 1 by x. Now, what about the case when the polynomial has odd degree? If d is odd, we will say that put x is equal to minus 1, we will find that p of minus 1 is equal to, according to the definition, the polynomial p of x satisfies x power d p of 1 by x. So using that definition, p of minus 1 is minus 1 power d p of minus 1. And since d is odd, this is negative p of minus 1. So p of minus 1 is negative p of minus 1, which implies p of minus 1 is 0, which implies minus 1 is a root of p of x. So if you have a self-reciprocal polynomial with odd degree, minus 1 is guaranteed to be a root of that polynomial, right? So therefore, we can write now p of x. We can take out the factor x plus 1 from it and write it as x plus 1 times p1 of x, where p1 of x has even degree, right? p1 of x has even degree and its degree is d minus 1, right? Now, P is self-reciprocal. P is self-reciprocal. So, let's try to find out the characteristic of the P1 polynomial, right? So, let's say x plus 1 P1x is equal to P of x and P of x was equal to x power d P of 1 by x, right? Now, using the fact that p of x satisfies the condition x power d p of 1 by x, what will be p of 1 by x? Let's think of what is p of 1 by x. We will use this result here. Let's say p of 1 by x is 1 by x plus 1 times p1 of 1 by x, right? So that is basically x plus 1 by x multiplied by p1 of 1 by x. This is p of 1 by x, right? And I'll put that here. So it is x bar d into x plus 1 divided by x and p1 of 1 by x, right? What I'm getting is x power d minus 1 into x plus 1 into p1 of 1 by x, right? So notice the first result here and the last result here. Comparing it, we are getting p1 of x is equal to x power d minus 1, p1 of 1 by x, which means that p1 is also self-reciprocal. p1 is also a polynomial that is self-reciprocal, right? And notice that the p1 polynomial has degree, even degree, right? We have already characterized any even degree polynomial px any polynomial px with even degree which was self-reciprocal can be written as x bar d by 2 q of x plus 1 by x, right? Right now we got p of x as x plus 1 p1x and p1x has degree d minus 1 and d minus 1 is even and we saw that p1x is self-reciprocal. So what can we do about p1x? We can write p1x as x power d minus 1 by 2 q of or instead of q we can use r here because we have already used q, r of x plus 1 by x right so combining that with this we get x plus 1 into x power d by 2 minus 1 by 2 into r of x plus 1 by x right so this is the characterization of an odd degree polynomial, which is self-reciprocal. This is the this is odd odd polynomial, odd degree, and this is the characteristic of an even degree polynomial, which is self-reciprocal, right? So remember these two characterizations; it will come in handy for you while solving problems, right? So finally, we can conclude with the following set of results theorems that we have understood for self-reciprocal polynomials. What are the things we have understood? First of all, p of x should be equal to x power d p of 1 by x. That's the basic definition. Secondly, the coefficients should satisfy a k is equal to a of d minus k for k goes from 0, 1 till d. 
here d is degree of p of x. So the coefficients of the polynomials are a symmetric, symmetric coefficients. Then thirdly, we can say p of x, if it is even, p of x can be written as x bar d by 2 q of x plus 1 by x or x plus 1 x power d minus 1 by 2 r of x plus 1 by x. Here d is even, here d is odd and p of x is a self-reciprocal polynomial. We can also say that if p of x is even degree, the roots of the polynomial can be paired up like this. The roots will be r1, r2 till r d by 2 and then it will be 1 by r1, 1 by r2 till 1 by r d by 2. And if p of x has odd degree, if p of x has odd degree, in that case, the first root is always 1 and after that roots are r1, r2 till r of d minus 1 by 2 and 1 by r1, 1 by r2 till 1 by r of d minus 1 by 2. So the roots can always be paired. In the case of an odd degree polynomial, 1 is guaranteed to be a root. Right? That is another result that we get. Now let's look at a couple of questions to confirm what we have learned in this video and just make sure that you understand the ideas. So first question is this. Assume that the polynomial p of x is equal to x power 4 plus ax cubed plus bx squared plus ax plus 1 has two real roots whose product is minus 1, whose product is minus 1. Now we have to find the range of a and b. You have to find the range of a and b. Now think about it. It is obvious from the coefficients that the coefficients are symmetric. 1, a, b, a, 1. Right? Coefficients are symmetric. So therefore, it's a self-reciprocal polynomial. Self-reciprocal polynomial. And notice that the degree is 4. The degree of this polynomial is 4. So there will be 4 roots. And if two of them are called r and s, the other two roots will be 1 by r and 1 by s. Right? These are the four roots because it's an even degree self-reciprocal polynomial. So these are the roots and they have said that two of the roots are real with product minus 1. So let's say, let's say that rs product is minus 1. That is given to us. Right? Correct. So we can say now that according to Vieta's relation, some of the roots r plus s plus 1 by r plus 1 by s will be minus a and some of the roots taken two at a time. So that will be rs plus 1 by rs plus 1 plus 1 plus r by s plus s by r and taking some of the roots roots taken two at a time. Multiply two of them and we are getting rs 1, r by s, s by r 1, 1 by rs, these six pairs, right? This should be equal to minus plus so b, right? Now think about it. We already know rs is equal to minus 1. So this is minus 1, this is minus 1 and these are plus 1 and plus 1. So this adds, this whole thing cancels off. And you have basically r square plus s square by rs, right? 
R squared plus S squared by RS is equal to B. And this is equal to minus of R squared plus S squared is equal to B because RS is minus one. And we can write this as minus of R squared plus S squared plus two RS and plus two RS, right? Is equal to B. So think about it. This is minus of R plus S whole square and plus two RS is minus two is equal to B, right? So what we know from here is that B is less than equal to minus two because this quantity is greater than equal to zero. So when you do minus R plus S whole square, it will be less than equal to zero. So B will be something lesser than minus two. That is for sure. What is A? We can evaluate this by saying that it will be R plus S plus R plus S by RS and RS is minus one. So this is zero, right? So A is zero. So we're getting A is zero and B is less than equal to minus two. That is the range of A and B here. And notice that the polynomial becomes X power four plus B X square plus one since A vanishes. So we have gotten so much information just because we knew that it is a reci self reciprocal polynomial, right? Because we knew that we were able to figure this out. Let's look at another question. This question says, let a1, a2 till an be natural numbers. whose sum is, whose sum is 20, 20. Now we have to find, find the least positive real number T such that the equation summation i goes from 1 to n a i x bar i by 1 plus x bar 2 i is equal to t has only one positive real root. Think about this problem. We have to get a situation where this particular equation has only one positive real root, right? Now let's define, let's define f of x to be equal to this summation. i goes from 1 to n a i x bar i by 1 plus x bar 2 i, right? You can easily check that f of 1 by x is equal to summation i goes from 1 to n a i by x bar i by 1 plus 1 by x bar 2 i. And if you simplify this, you will realize that this is becoming same as f of x. This is becoming x bar 2 i goes on top, it becomes x bar i and you have x bar 2 i plus 1 here, which is equal to f of x. Okay? So we have f of x is equal to f of 1 by x. So if r is a root of the equation f of x is equal to t, then we can say 1 by r is also a root of the same equation, right? Why? Because if f of x is equal to t is satisfied by r, we have f of r is equal to t. And that means since f of r is same as f of 1 by r, we have one by f of 1 by r is also equal to t, right? So if r is a root of this equation, then 1 by r is also a root of the equation, right? What is the meaning of that? Uh, like what that means is f of x is equal to t, this equation has r and 1 by r as roots. The only exception is if r is equal to 1 by r. If r is equal to 1 by r, these are not two distinct roots, right? then they are equal numbers. 
So that is the case when R square is equal to one and R can be plus or minus one, right? That is the only exception to this property, right? Now, if as the question says, fx is equal to t as only one positive real root, only one positive real root, right? Then the only way this can happen is if r is equal to plus one. Right? r cannot be minus one then, r has to be plus one. So in that case, what we will say is we can find the value of t because we know that f of one is equal to t is true. r is equal to plus one is a root for this equation. So when you put r is equal to plus one as substituted in this, you will get summation i goes from 1 to n, f of x was what? ai xi by 1 plus x power 2y and therefore f of 1 is i goes from 1 to n ai by 1 plus 1. So that is half of summation i goes from 1 to n ai which is half of 2020 that is 1010 and that must be our value of t, right? So we found that r and 1 by r are both roots of this equation. So since the question said that we can have only one positive root, if both are roots of this equation, then you will have two positive roots, right? So the only way you can avoid having more than one positive real roots is if r is equal to 1 by r. And if r is equal to 1 by r, the positive value is coming when r is equal to 1. Okay? This is a single positive root. So when we put r is equal to 1 in the equation, we can find the value of t and that comes out to be 1010. I hope you understand how we found the value of t. Right? Okay. The next problem is an Italian Maths Olympiad problem, 1994. Look at this one. It says, let a0 plus a1x plus a two x square, so on till a two n x power two n be equal to one plus x plus x square whole power n. Right? We have to find the values of first of all a zero plus a two till a two n. Secondly, a one plus a three till a 2n minus 1 and finally the value of a0 a1 minus a1 a2 plus a2 a3 minus so on till minus a 2n minus 1 a 2n. Now the first couple of parts of this question are super easy. All of you should be able to do that because we will just say p of 1 Let's say P of X is this polynomial. P of 1 will be A0 plus A1 plus A2n, which is equal to 3 power n. And P of minus 1 is equal to A0 minus A1 till A2n, which is equal to 1 minus 1 plus 1. That will become 1 power n. And we can say p of 1 plus p of minus 1 whole divided by 2 will be equal to a0 plus a2 plus a2n. What are we doing? We are adding the 2. If you add the 2, you will get only the even terms left over. Right? So this will be the answer for a0 plus a, a2 till a2n. So that will be basically 3 power n plus 1 by 2. And similarly, if you subtract in that case, you will be left with the odd terms. So that will be basically 3 power n minus 1 by 2. So this is the answer for the second part. This is the answer for the first part. It is the third part that is more interesting. Now, what you have to find out is this sum, right? So let's look at our original function. P of x is 1 plus x plus x squared whole power n. Now, let's find out what is P of 1 by x. That is clearly 1 plus 1 by x plus 1 by x squared whole power n. 
which is if you simplify it, it will be x power 2n on the bottom and you will get 1 plus x plus x square whole power n on top. We are getting p of 1 by x is equal to p of x divided by x power 2n, right? Which implies that p of x is equal to x power 2n times p of 1 by x. This is the condition we are getting. And notice that p of x has degree 2n. So if it is following this condition, then p of x is self-reciprocal. Because this is the definition of being a self-reciprocal polynomial, right? So therefore, we can say ai is equal to a of 2n minus i for all i from 0, 1 till n minus 1, right? Basically, what I'm saying is a0 should be a2n, a1 should be a2n minus 1, a2 should be a2n minus 2. All the coefficients have to follow this pattern. So finally, you should get an minus 1 is equal to an plus 1. These, this is the condition for px to be self-reciprocal. And therefore, if you look at the summation, what was the summation that the, what is, was being asked? It was summation of minus 1 power i a0 a i a i plus 1, right? If you i goes from 0 to 2n minus 1. If you expand this, what are you getting? When you put i is 0, you get a0, a1. When you put i is 1, you get minus a1, a2. Then you get a2, a3, and so on till minus a2n minus 1, a2n. This is what we wanted to find, right? Now, we can write ai, ai plus 1 as being equal to a 2n minus i, a 2n minus i minus 1. We are just replacing a i with a 2n minus i because it's a reciprocal polynomial, self-reciprocal. So the coefficients are matching like this. Therefore, if you group the terms together carefully, you should realize that a 0, a 1. First of all, notice that there are 2n terms here, 2n terms in the summation. 2n terms in the summation. So you can group the terms two at a time such that you will group a0, a1 with minus a2n minus 1, a2n. Then I will group minus a1, a2 with minus a2n minus 1, a2n minus 2. Right? And I am going to keep grouping terms two at a time. The first one is grouped with this one. The second one will be grouped with the second last term. Third one will be grouped like this. And you will get n groups of two terms, right? The key point is that each of this is zero. Each of this is zero because of this condition, because it's a self-reciprocal polynomial. So finally, the answer for the third part, this summation is equal to zero, and it follows from the properties of the self-reciprocal polynomials. Right? So that concludes our section on reciprocal polynomials and self-reciprocal polynomials. What we will start in the next class onwards is the next section for this course, which will cover complex numbers and polynomials. So that will be super useful for students who are preparing for JE as well as for students who are preparing for Maths Olympiads. So stay tuned for that. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will join you in the next video for this course, which will cover complex numbers and polynomials, right? See you next time.